My grandfather's clock was too large for the shelf, so it stood ninety years on the floor. It was taller by half than the old man himself, though it weighed not a penny weight more. It was bought on the morn of the day that he was born, and was always his treasure and pride. But it stopped short, never to go again when the old man died. Ninety years without slumbering, tick tock, tick tock, his life seconds numbering, tick tock, tick tock, it stopped. Short, never to go again when the old man died. In watching its pendulum swing to and fro, many hours had he spent while a boy. And in childhood and manhood, the clock seemed to know and to share both his grief and his joy. For it struck twenty-four when he entered at the door with a blooming and beautiful bride. But it stopped short, never to go again when the old man died. Ninety years without slumbering, tick tock, tick tock, his life seconds numbering, tick tock, tick tock, it stopped. Short, never to go again when the old man died. My grandfather said that of those he could hire, not a servant so faithful he found. For it wasted no time and had but one desire at the close of each week to be wound. And it kept in its place not a frown upon its face, and its hand never hung by its side. But it stopped short, never to go again when the old man died. Ninety years. Without slumbering, tick tock, tick tock, his life seconds numbering, tick tock, tick tock, it stopped short, never to go again when the old man died. It rang an alarm in the dead of the night, an alarm that for years had been dumb. And we knew that his spirit was pluming his flight, that his hour of departure had come. Still the clock kept the time with a soft and muffled chime, as we silently stood by his side. But it stopped short, never to go again when the old man died. Without slumbering, tick tock, tick tock, his life seconds numbering, tick tock, tick tock, it stopped short, never to go again when the old man died. Yes, it stopped short, never to go again when the old.